した僕たちはどこかでは考えないよう生きてた光ある未来でも Hey guys, I'll be sure you guys how to make your advanced,、uh, you know what I'm saying, your advanced that saving system. So, before we start this, I want to apologize for not having consistent updates on my videos. I promise that I will keep it up some more. I had a tiny break, but I'm back now. But、uh, what we're going to do first, we're going to go into our game settings and we're going to go to our security and we're going to enable studio access to API service. And we need this so we can access our data stores and we can actually save our data. Uh, most important thing to make this data store work. If you don't have that enabled, make sure you enable that or the game will not work or it will not save none of your data when you leave the game. So, we're going to start off that we're going to start this off by going into a starter GUI and we're going to start off with the start button. So, just making the simple start button so we can click on it so we can, so we can see our stats. And all we do here is make a display frame. We make our little text box and the frames inside of the text box. So, you can just add a text box, but I just added a frame. Just so if I add anything else, I can just scale it, and this is gonna scale as well. So basically, this is whatever you want. You can design the stat bar however you want it to be like. And then inside this local script, well, before we go to the local script, let's describe the, the show stats. Instead of show stats here, you can see that we have our little show stats, and this show stats is gonna be our let me make it uh, not let me make it visible so you can actually see it. It's gonna show where we have our, our defense and all that. So, we have our labels, we have our, our strength label and our defense label. We have our defense number and our strength number. So, our script is going to be changing the strength number and the defense number. And we're just having defense label and strength label just to indicate what is like what、uh, value is actually being increased. So, we have all that done. Pretty simple. We have our frame con、uh, containing all that. And inside this local script, this is、uh, pretty easy. We're locating player, locating player GUI, and we're locating the stat button. Uh, the stop button is basically our, <clears throat> our、uh, this right here, our little stop button right here. And now we're going to locate our strength value. So we're going to do, uh, uh, before, we, the,、uh, before we locate the strength value,、uh, we're going to go into our power system script. Inside of here,、uh, as you remember, we're going to locate、um, our strength and our defense. Remember, we already located from our other video, previous video. This is going to be locating what, what is going to be indicated when we press the stop button. So, our strength, we're gonna look at our strength, we're gonna look at our defense value, and now we're gonna look at our,、uh, now we're gonna look at the label. So, this label is gonna, this is where we're gonna change the text so it actually shows the number, right? So,、um, I, I could have made this like more specific so I can make it understand some, so you guys can understand some more. This is pretty simple because it, it just, we're all we're doing is just changing the test, we're just changing the text every time the player clicks on this button. So, every time I click on a button, the, uh, It's gonna update it so it's gonna show a new strength value and a new defense value. So we're setting strength,、uh, strength label.txt. So strength label.txt.、Uh, we're gonna do it equal to strength, strength.value. So let's say our strength is like 8. It's gonna make the, the number 8 into a string value. It's gonna make it to a string and then it's gonna show 8. We don't have to have two string, but I just did it there just to make it optimized. And then we're gonna, cut, and then we're gonna、um, connect the function. We made a little function here. So every time the,、uh, they click on a little start、uh, text button, it's gonna fire and then、uh, it's gonna fire this function and then our stats is gonna update. So that's basically how we update it. So this, this is a super simple uh, concept. Um, so this, that's how we're gonna be updating our strength value and our defense value every time we click on it. So let's say you're doing push ups while your,、um, while your、um, stat thing, while your little frame is still up. What you can do is that it won't update until you, let, until you like, Get until you make the frame go away and it comes right back. So, while you're doing push ups, your stats won't change. So, unless you don't want it like that, every single time it changes, you can just update it. But I made it that every time you click on stats, it's going to update the、uh, strength and defense value. And after what we're going to do here, we're going to go into our power system. Inside of here, we're going to be doing our data stores. The data stores are pretty simple if you really think about it.、Uh, when you get into this, like, the scripting world of Lua and Roblox Lua, this becomes way more easier. So, we're gonna make a variable called save data and we're gonna do game. We're gonna、uh, locate a、uh, data store service and we're gonna get data store and we're gonna get new system. We're gonna name it new system. Whatever you change, if you change this name with, by like any letter, any number, anything, right? So, if I change new system and I add another M, everybody's data is gonna reset. But if I, let's say I have like 50 stats, 50 defense, if I have 50 stats, 50 defense, like everything on my stats is like 50. And I, and I change it back to like this new system right here. Let, that means I'm gonna have my old data and not that, and I'm gonna have like、uh, my old data from last time with this name. So, whatever the name is, it saves a certain、uh, data. So, just, just remember that. 
So basically, uh, <clears throat> uh, all the um, the values here from our last video, I'm not going to explain it here because uh, if you want to go understand what we did here, you can watch from our other video. I'll be leaving it in the description and I'll put it in the end of the video. What we're going to do here, we're going to uh, make a local success and value equal to pcall function. And we're going to return get async player.userid. We want to return a uh, uh, player.userid because we want to make sure we can save it to their player ID and not their name. So every let's say the player changes their name, they can't change the name back if they get banned from the game and like try to come back or anything like that. And let's say they change their name and like let's say they change their name and um uh they have like certain data like they have like a million stats or something like that, and then uh they change their name, it's gonna override their stats and now it's gonna it's not gonna know who that person was anymore. So now we're gonna do if success. So if this so if, so if it fires successful, then uh, we're going to continue if value so if value um what we're going to do here we're going to save all the values uh according to whatever value we have here so let me let me explain it more specifically right so we're going to get um we're going to put this in order right so strength dot value equals value one so we're just or so think of it like a table we're just saving all the values inside of the value table think of it like that so strength dot value will be equal to value one Defense.value be equal to value three. Let's say we have something else like uh, blocking. Blocking.value be equal to value three. So just like that, right? And if it's not success and it errors, then we're gonna set all the values uh, equal to zero. So this will happen when the player joins the game. This is the first time joining the game. Or you could just kick the player, but I made it much more simpler by just making the stats equal to zero. And now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna fire the uh, player that removing function. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna we're gonna get a variable. We're gonna call a stat table. Inside of the stat table, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna locate all our strength. We're gonna locate all our values that we're gonna be using. We're look. We're gonna be using the strength and the defense value. And after we after we look at our values, uh, we're gonna do a little. We're gonna return back the saved data, but we're gonna set async. So now we're setting it, and uh, after we got it, now we're trying to set it. And now we're gonna return the player user ID, and we're gonna uh set it equal to this table so our strength value and our defense value and now we're going to do instead of having um value here we're going to have if error because now since we set it now if it errors it's going to print what our error is so for example an error would be if we had player.user it would say that uh user cannot find player.suvir like game.player.suvir because it couldn't find me as a player so that's why these simple errors this small three lines here could really help you out and tell you what uh, serious Eric could be inside your script and now this is the most important part because I feel like most uh, new scripters don't know about this but this is super helpful to um, help you know like okay um, my game uh, every time I leave the game it doesn't automate it doesn't save all the time it's just like it's like a 80% chance of it saving now using game bind to close function will make it a hundred percent sure that every time the player leaves the game it's going to save the data so now we're gonna do a four Ivy loop and we're gonna get all now we're gonna get the players and now we're going to look at our stat table from here and now we're going to do now we're going to do the same thing with different players removing into bind to close here and that's basically all you have to do just re repeat whatever you did in players that are removing and put it down to bind to close and everything down here it had we did not change it at all we just kept it the same from our last video and that's basically now if you were to run this game right here uh it would work perfectly fine so if you have any questions and if you enjoyed this tutorial leave a like leave a comment subscribe because, you know what I'm saying, I put these videos up for you guys so you guys can learn. I hope you guys are enjoying a lot of this. And enjoy your day.